at altitudes where sky turns dark and mistakes turn fatal. One Cold War jet still flies missions no one will talk about until now. Welcome to Defense Firepower. Today, we open the hangar door, just enough to see what keeps the U-2 alive in 2025. Lockheed's U-2 first flew on August 1, 1955, built by Skunk Works for high-altitude reconnaissance. The U-2R-U-2S family lists a span of 103 feet. Wing area approximately 1,000 square feet. Max gross takeoff 30,700 to 41,000 pounds. Operational ceiling above 70,000 feet. Cruising Herzl 413 kilometers per hour at 65,000 feet. Unrefueled range 4,270 nautical miles and cruise duration 10.4 hours. NASA's program history notes early missions flying at 65,000 to 73,000 feet with the infamous Coffin Corner. Very narrow margin between stall and buffet at altitude. Standard profiles reached 60,000 feet in approximately 30 to 45 minutes and landings required a mobile chase car to call out height cues, procedures still used today. Power is a GEF 118-101 turbofan. USAF cites a lightweight, fuel-efficient engine enabling very long sorties without tanker support. Electrical Block 10 replaced legacy wiring with fiber optic architecture to lower electronic noise, making the airframe a quieter platform for modern sensors. In thin stratospheric air, glide-like wings, aspect ratio approximately 10.6, from 103 squared divided by 1,000, generate lift where conventional designs run out of margin, hence the narrow envelope. NASA's Development Chronicle documents early KC-135 refueling trials and transfer rates up to approximately 900 gallons in approximately 5 minutes, extending practical endurance when oxygen supplies allowed. The U-2S integrates B-A-E-A-N slash A-L-Q-2-1, radar warning plus electronic countermeasures, fielded under Block 20 modernization to protect at U-2 altitudes. The avionics tech refresh adds a new OMS standard mission computer and modern comm slash nav, first flight September 2023. Sires 2C multispectral integration across the fleet was announced in February 2020, enabled by open mission systems to speed capability drops. ASARS-2B Raytheon uses an AESA and is designed to double the surveillance range versus ASARS-2A while maintaining mapping slash imagery resolution. On December 15, 2020, AIU-2 flew with ARTUMU AI agent acting as a working crew member for sensor tactical tasks, first U.S. military aircraft to fly with AI on board. The type's Cold War origins included overflights that informed U.S. leadership, NASA's history records, operational ceilings, and early cover stories for high-altitude data. In 1960, pilot Francis Gary Powers was shot down over the USSR, defining the risks of manned recon. In February 2023, a U-2 pilot captured the Pentagon-released cockpit image of the PRC high-altitude balloon. State Department briefings cited U-2 high-res imagery showing SIGINT capable antennas. In August 2025, a TU-2S flew 14 hours over all 48 U.S. states to demonstrate endurance amid retirement debates. USAF provided cost per flight hour for U-2 was $30,813. For modernization, the fiscal year 2021 Air Force request included approximately $120 million for U-2, with approximately $48 million for ASARS-2B Raider upgrades and other mods OCO funds. 
Availability has tightened. Reporting shows mission-capable rates for the single-seat U2 declined from approximately 76% in 2023 to approximately 61.9% fiscal year 24, with parts obsolescence cited by leadership. GAO documented U2 O&M of approximately $20.6 million in fiscal 1999 under contractor logistics support, illustrating how sustainment has long been closely managed. USAF plans to retire the U-2 in 2026, shifting toward space and unmanned ISR. In 2025, House appropriators limited retirements, for example, capping in 2026, reflecting ongoing congressional skepticism about rapid divestment. Lockheed's notional successor studies, TRX slash UQ2, remain concepts without a formal USAF program of record. The U-2 endures because no fielded substitute yet combines its altitude, modular sensors, and rapid retasking at scale. If budgets, availability, and threats keep tightening, should America retire the U-2 in 2026 or keep a limited cadre flying until a proven replacement is in hand? Drop your verdict below. If you value fact-checked military analysis, like, share, and subscribe to Defense Firepower. Until next time, stay vigilant, stay locked and loaded.